Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been absolutely forever since I last posted a video on my YouTube channel and I really do apologise. There's a lot of reasons why I haven't been active on YouTube lately and I could tell you all of them but I'm just going to leave 2015 in the past because it is 2016 now, it's January. Today I've got my best of beauty favourites of 2015 for you guys. I'm going to go through all the skincare and makeup sort of items and some random favourites that I've been loving in the last year. So let me know if we have the same favourites. Let me know what your favourites are in the comment section below. I hope you all had an amazing Christmas and New Year. I went to my uncle's house for Christmas for Christmas dinner and it was amazing. And for New Year's I pretty much stayed at home, I didn't really do much. So if you guys want to know what my beauty favourites for 2015 were then please keep watching. I'm going to try my very best to get through all of these as quickly as possible because I do have a lot to get through and I don't want this video to be more than 45 minutes but it probably might be so apologies for that if it is. But we're going to get started with makeup. In the last year I've been especially loving this NYX Angel Primer and this is just a very affordable primer. It blurs out all your pores and creates a nice canvas for your foundation to go on top of. It also keeps you matte throughout most of the day. This one is not as great as the next one I'm going to show you, but it's a great everyday staple if you don't want to spend a fortune on a primer. This next primer, a lot of people have been comparing it to the Angel Veil, except I find this one's a lot better and it lasts a lot longer. So it's definitely been a favourite of mine in the last year and this is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I've got the small size because I wanted to try it out before purchasing the full size but definitely when this is finished I'm going to purchase the full size. And what I like about this is once you put it on your skin it also blurs up your pores but it lasts throughout the day. Literally I've worn this to work a few times, my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, sometimes that doesn't last throughout the day on me personally because I do have quite oily skin. This just keeps my makeup in place all day. It also has SPF 15 but I do feel like this looks quite good in photos. The next primer is a Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. This one again minimises your pores. You probably notice I love a lot of pore minimising products as I do have quite large pores. And yeah this is just another great pore minimising primer that I've been enjoying. The next one is this Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer. And the one I have here is the mattifying one. I do really love the smoothing one as well but I can't seem to find it. I've misplaced it somewhere. But these two are absolutely amazing. What I love about the mattifying one is I apply it on my T-zone because it is extremely mattifying. I don't think I've come across anything as mattifying as this product right here. And I like to use this when I know that I need my makeup to last a very long time. I used this when I went to a convention earlier last year and it lasted throughout the day. It looked extremely good in the photos that I took. And it's just an all round good primer and I really do recommend this if you have really oily skin like I do. My next primer is this MAC Prep and Prime Natural Radiance Base and this is the yellow one. This is the last primer I'm going to talk to you about, I promise. This one, what I like about it is it's very cooling on the skin and I like it for those days when my skin feels a little bit more dry than usual. What this does is it creates a nice base before your foundation without looking too dewy because dewy just does not agree with my skin but this one is just the perfect in between dewy and matte kind of like a satin finish and it makes your foundation apply a lot nicer and smoother. I'm going to quickly move on to BB creams before foundations and the first BB cream that I've absolutely been loving, especially in the summer, is this Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. This one has a really nice formula, it's not too thick and heavy which is not what you really want during the summer, especially on holiday. Mine is in the shade Spice 08 and it's a pretty good match. I, ch I tend to use this more on holiday because I'm in the sun a lot more and this has SPF 30 to keep you protected. It has quite a luminous finish which I usually wouldn't tend to go towards but for the summer I tend to like that sort of finish and it doesn't make me too oily once I set my whole face. So really been liking that one. The next one that I've really been enjoying is this Benefit Big Easy BB Cream and this one has SPF 35. What I like about this one is it has a matte finish and it just looks so nice on the skin. It's not too thick, it's not too heavy, it does a good job at keeping your oils at bay. Mine is in the shade 06 Deep Beige which I believe is the darkest colour. But that's probably the only con about this BB cream as they don't really have a wide shade selection. The next one is this LA Girl Pro BB cream and mine is in the shade Medium. 
This one is really affordable. I think it was about £6. And again, it gives a nice semi-matte finish. It lasts throughout the day. I use this a lot in September when I went to my holiday in Crete and I just really like it. What I also like about this BB cream is for a cheaper drugstore brand, I was quite surprised that they had this shade that has quite a lot of yellow in it, which I naturally tend to go towards rather than pink. So that's another thing that I really like about this BB cream. This one doesn't have SPF though, which is unfortunate, but again, it's still an amazing BB cream. Moving on to foundation, my first favourite foundation of the last year has been this Maybelline Matte and Poreless Foundation. Unfortunately, this one's not actually released in the UK. It's still an amazing foundation that I definitely needed to mention because it's definitely been one of my favourite drugstore foundations. Mine is in the shade 228 Soft Tan. What I find with this one is it's not completely matte, it's kind of like a semi-demi matte finish, but it doesn't make your face look flat, it gives it still gives you dimension to your face so you can wear this alone if you wanted to as well. This next foundation is arguably the best foundation that I discovered in the last year and this one is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation and mine is in the shade 108 Caramel Beige and mine is actually nearly finished, I really need to buy another one. This is another foundation that wasn't released in the UK but I had to get it. They do have this one in the UK actually but they only have about three or four colours and none of them suit me. But this one is a perfect shade. What I like about this one is it's completely matte. It lasts literally throughout the day. I don't even have to powder with this foundation because it's so matte. And it gives you a really nice full coverage. The next foundation that I discovered last year is this Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation Stick. And mine is in the shade Y405, which is 153 in the old formula foundation. And to be honest, I can't really tell the difference between the Ultra HD and the HD foundations, but what I like about this one is it's a cream foundation, and usually with cream foundations, they don't really work for my skin, because once I apply it, I get oily within minutes. With this one, it glides onto the skin like nothing's on your skin, and it just gives a lovely airbrushed matte, semi-matte finish, semi to satin finish, I would say. And this foundation is a really great one for photography, so I'm definitely going to be using it when I go to my next convention. The next cream foundation that I've been absolutely loving is this Ket foundation, and it's in the shade 05, which is from the Olive line they have. And I've just been loving this so much. I've only got the refill pan. It's not too pricey if you buy it on its own, but the palettes are a little bit more pricey because it's kind of more for makeup artists. And what I like about this foundation is it, again, glides onto the skin very smoothly. I've not had any issues with this cream foundation getting oily on my skin. And I really like the coverage. It's a really nice medium to buildable full coverage, I would say. And it's just overall a great foundation and just another favourite of mine from the last year. Another foundation that I discovered in 2015 is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. And mine is in the shade 08 Medium. And this foundation, firstly, the packaging is beautiful. It's rose gold, which is my absolute favourite for packaging and one of my favourite colours anyway. This foundation is also quite matte. What I like about this foundation more than others is the colour. I feel like the colour is spot on. It's not too yellow, it's not too beige. It's just the perfect colour that suits my skin. So if you guys want to see a review and demo for this or just a tutorial of me using this, then let me know in the comments because I'd be more than happy to do that for you guys. It lives true to the name, it's definitely magic on your skin. Definitely recommend this for oily to normal people. Moving on to concealers, my new discovery and um, probably favourite concealer towards the end of last year is this Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer. And mine is in the shade Y33. This concealer reminds me a lot of the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer with the kind of coverage that it gives you. The only difference is this one's a lot more lighter, as in lighter on the skin, and it looks airbrushed. It's definitely ultra HD. So I can't wait to continue using this in 2016. Besides the concealer that I just showed you, the next concealer that I'm going to show you has been the best concealer of 2015, in my opinion. I discovered this quite early on in 2015, and this one is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. And I have it in two shades. I have it in medium neutral, which is just a tiny bit lighter than me. And I have this medium light neutral, which I tend to use a lot more under my eyes. This one is actually nearly finished, which is why I bought this one. It gives you kind of a medium to buildable coverage. 
under your eyes or you could even use this to cover blemishes as well because it's that amazing. It definitely lives up to the name, it's weightless and it's just the most perfect concealer, I don't know what else to say. Another concealer that I've been enjoying in 2015 is the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer in Warm Medium 03. This one is actually, as you can see, much loved and the writing's completely gone off. But I've been enjoying using this. It's not a new discovery for me, but it's one that I've always just been reaching for because it's that amazing. It gives kind of a full coverage. You can use it for blemishes or under your eyes. I tend to use it for under my eyes and the high points of my face because this one is quite light and they don't have many darker shades. But this one's very affordable. It's about £4 and I would definitely continue using this. I've really been enjoying this L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper. This one's in dark brown. This just does an amazing job at setting your brows. I've tried lots of brow setting products from the drugstore and high end and this one I keep coming back to because it's really affordable and it does a great job at keeping your brows in place which is something I personally struggle with because my brows are quite hairy so it's difficult for me to find a product that actually tames them and this one really does. Moving on to mascaras, my first mascara favourite of last year has been the L'Oreal Miss Manga Mascara and I've actually been enjoying the original formula the most out of all three that I've tried but I do like the punky one, this one's the punky mascara. This one is just not as voluminous, voluminous as the original one and the Black Angel one, the formula is slightly different and I just don't enjoy it as much as the original one but overall I really like these mascaras and they're really affordable again. I personally prefer drugstore mascaras than high-end because you tend to find very similar mascaras in the drugstore as you would in the high-end stores and what I find with mascaras is you need to replace them every six months as well so I just prefer to spend less for the same quality. After saying that, the next mascara that I've been loving is the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara. I actually got this in a goodie bag that I got at a blogger's event. What I like about this one is it does an amazing job at separating your lashes. I like to use this in combination with another mascara sometimes because sometimes it doesn't give me the volume that I want. But I've really been enjoying this because it separates the lashes and it also makes you look like you have more lashes, which is what I really like about this one. Moving on to eye pencils. You guys know that I love these Rimmel Scandalized Coal Liners. This one's in black and nude. These are the two that I use a lot of the times in my tutorials. And a more recent one that I discovered in 2015 is this Anastasia Beverly Hills Metallic Luster Liner in liquid gold. This liner is just so unique. I've not come across anything like this in a drugstore or high-end or anything and it's just such a gorgeous gold colour. I tend to use this a lot on the waterline. I've got it on today and you can also use it as a liner on your lid as well. This has just been a great discovery for me in 2015 and I'm going to continue to use this because it's amazing. It's so creamy and it glides on so smoothly. It's just the perfect liner in my opinion. I also like this because sometimes I don't like going in with a nude liner because it can be a bit stark especially on my skin tone so this one's a bit more subtle even though it's gold but it's just amazing. Earlier this year I finished my Soap and Glory Brow Archery and I wanted to try something different so I tried this Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz and this one's in a shade dark brown. This is so good. It does such a great job at filling in my eyebrows and shaping them and it's the perfect colour as well and I've just been enjoying this a lot in the last year. The best liquid liner for me last year was just this one. There's nothing that's even come close to this one and this is the NYC liquid liner in black. I use this pretty much in every single video that I upload because there's just nothing as jet black, matte and perfect as this liner. The only thing I would say is the tip could be a little bit better because sometimes I can get a bit too excited and apply my liner a bit too thick but apart from that, this is the perfect liner. It's so affordable. It's like $2.99 or something like that. And it stays put all day throughout everything, even rain, in my opinion. So if you guys are looking for a new liner, definitely try this one out. And it's just been an absolute favourite of mine in the last year. This next product really doesn't need an introduction, but I thought I'd include it in this video anyway. And this is the MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot and Soft Ochre. I use this again in pretty much every video and it's just a really nice base for eyeshadows. It is a bit lighter than my skin which I really like because it creates a nice brightening effect on my eyelids. 
it covers any veins or darkness that I have and it also lasts all day without creasing. In the last year there's only one setting powder that I've really been using to set all my highlighted areas anyway and this is the Laura Messier Secret Brightening Powder and this one's in the shade number 2 which has a slight yellow tint. What I like about this is it does an amazing job at setting your concealer. It sets and it doesn't crease throughout the day. It just stays put and it feels quite smooth wherever you set it. It also does live up to the name. It does create a brightening effect. But I don't feel like this gives me any flashback. I've taken photos with this flash photography and I don't seem to have any issues with it. I have heard that it gives you flashback but I personally haven't had that issue. Onto highlighters, it actually took me quite a while to whittle it down to just a few and even then I still have so many highlighters to show you. So my absolute favourite highlighter of last year, and I feel so bad for mentioning this because it is sold out and it was limited edition, it's the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Oh Darling. And this, oh my god you guys, I haven't actually used it in any videos because I have been absent for quite a while, apologies again but it's just so gorgeous. You can see this highlighter is much loved and even though there are very similar highlighters on the market, this one I just feel is irreplaceable. There's nothing like it in my opinion. It's just the most perfect gold. A lot of people have been comparing it to the Laura Geller Gilded Honey highlighter and the difference with this one and that one is this one I feel like gives a more wet metallic look to the skin which I personally prefer and it's also a lot more pigmented in my opinion. I feel like I have to build up with the Laura Geller one which I don't have to do with this one but I do like the Laura Geller one a lot as well, it just didn't make it to my favourites. It was also a great year for Becca Cosmetics and my favourite highlighter from them without a doubt has been this Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Champagne Pop and this one is kind of a goldish peachy silvery colour, it's hard to explain, it kind of has a little of everything but it just looks again so pretty it's this one right here you can see the difference between oh darling and champagne pop this one's a little bit lighter and has more peach in it but i personally really love this color because i feel like it's so flattering on so many different skin tones and it's just one of those highlighters you really do need in your life i'm not sure if it's still available but if it is i'll link it down below if i can find a link anywhere this next highlighter is actually from the high street and this one is the 17 Instant Glow Gold Bronze Shimmer Brick. I've used this in quite a few tutorials as well and it's again it's just so stunning. It's this one right here and what I like about this one is it's so affordable, It was it's under £10, I can't remember exactly how much it was but it's such a stunning highlighter, you can wear this every day if you want that extra pop of glow or even for special occasions, it's just an all round amazing highlighter that I really do enjoy. This next one is actually a liquid highlighter and this one is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal and what I like about this is it gives such a nice glow from within look. I apply it on my cheekbones and then I like to go over it with another pressed powder highlighter on top and it just creates the most gorgeous glow. It's kind of that glow that you can see from space, it's just so amazing and this one again lasts all day, it looks great on everyone and it's also a universal shade as well. As some of you guys may know, I do talk about how I had quite dark circles, it was mostly during the time that I was working because I would just not get enough sleep but these next two products have really helped in combating that and this one is the NYX Dark Circle Concealer in Medium and this does a really nice job at covering your dark circles and it's a nice peachy colour that kind of counteracts any blue or green tones under the eyes and this next one is this Bobbi Brown Corrector in light to medium peach it kind of does the same thing the only difference between this one and this one is I feel like the Bobbi Brown one is a little bit more hard to work with and it kind of can tug under the eyes where this one is a lot more creamier and is easier to apply and this one's also a lot more affordable but I've been loving both of them equally moving on to bronzer and contour products my favourite of last year has been this LA Girl Pro Concealer in Beautiful Bronze I like to apply this on all the usual areas that I like to contour and it's quite a warm shade but I do really like this and what I like about this as opposed to other cream liquid contour products is this one glides on so smoothly it's really easy to blend which I kind of struggle with like I have the Laura Mercier contour palette the cream one and that one's just so hard to blend I don't feel like the colours really suit me 
but this one's really affordable and it just does a really nice job at applying your contour. The next product that I've been loving, and I don't think this will come as any surprise because I have used this in quite a lot of videos, this one is a Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer in medium deep and this is a matte bronzer that is just so heavenly, it smells amazing, it smells like chocolate. And this shade is kind of in between a warm and a cool shade, which I personally think works amazing for my skin. It creates enough depth on my skin and it's just the perfect all-round colour for me. The next product that I've really been enjoying is the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel Bronzer. I believe these come in one colour. This one also smells amazing. It kind of smells like melon, it kind of has that bourgeois kind of scent. I do believe Chanel owns bourgeois. But this has just been an amazing cream product. I really like this. It's not too light for my skin tone. It just creates enough colour to make me look sun-kissed and glowy. And it just really gives you that nice sun-kissed look. And I've just really been liking this product. Another product that I've been loving in the last year is this Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. And I think everyone and their mum talks about this on YouTube. It's just the perfect palette to contour and highlight with. I've especially been loving Lyric, which is this yellow shade and shadow play which is this kind of bronzy contour shade it's just the perfect shade again in between warm and cool and it just works really nicely on my skin these powders are also very smooth and pigmented at the same time which i also really like about them i couldn't do this video without giving a quick mention to this next product this is the anastasia beverly hills contour kit this has been a staple in my kit for quite a while now but i've just really been enjoying it for such a long time this is what it looks like and I use this colour and this colour a lot again and I do like the two bronzing colours as well. I don't really go into much of the highlight shades but again it's just a staple for your kit especially if you're a makeup artist or if you're someone that just loves to contour and highlight. For blushes there hasn't been that many that I've tried in the last year but I have been enjoying these three that I've actually been enjoying for quite a while but I think it definitely deserves another mention and they are the EX1 blushes. I have them in three colours and the first one is Jet Set Glow, then there's Pretty and Peach and Natural Flush and these are just the perfect blushes that suit my skin tone. The brand itself creates products for olive skin tones and these three have been absolutely heaven sent. They are so pigmented and they just look so natural on the skin and I definitely highly recommend these. I've spoken about these quite a lot and I do use them probably in every other video. I use them so often. Another blusher that I've been loving is a Milani Baked Blusher in Luminoso. I actually don't have it to show because it's in the other room. There's just another beautiful blusher that I've really been enjoying in the last year and I've also been liking the MAC blush in Warm Soul. That one's another pretty colour. It's actually quite similar to that one as well. On to eyeshadows. I've been loving the Too Faced Natural Eyes shadow palette and it's just a neutral palette with some golds and your necessary brown shades. And this palette, what I've been liking about it most is they are so pigmented again and they're just really easy to work with. People have been going so crazy about this next palette and there's really no surprise why because it's absolutely stunning and this is the Morphe 350 palette it just has a bunch of really nice warm shades I've particularly been loving these colours this one and the dark browns and the warm browns as well it's just the perfect palette in my opinion I don't think there's anything on the market that is just as good as this palette colours again are really pigmented they're easy to work with you have your mix of mattes and shimmers and metallic shades and they're all nice and warm toned so they will suit a lot of people, especially those with more olive in their skin, I feel. Also, for 35 eyeshadows, for about, I think, £18, that is just a bargain in itself. I think there's only one brand that stole the show in terms of single eyeshadows in 2015, and that is Makeup Geek. These are all the Makeup Geek shadows that I have. I think there's one Anastasia Beverly Hills one over here. But apart from that, all of this is Makeup Geek. I've really been enjoying their shadows. I don't even know what I can say about these except they're kind of the perfect eyeshadows. They're on par with MAC, if not better than MAC in terms of quality. And they released these foiled shadows last year as well, which are absolutely amazing. So pigmented, so beautiful. And I've just been enjoying all of these colours. I have nothing bad to say about them. These ones here are kind of the perfect transition colours. I'm going to leave all my favourite shades in the description box below, otherwise we'd be here forever. We're nearly done with makeup favourites. The last few products are lip products that I've absolutely been loving in the last year. The first two lip pencils that I've been loving are both from MAC. This is Strip Down and Wow Lip Liner. 
and I've just really been liking these warm tones on my lips, especially the browny pink tones and these ones are just so creamy and pigmented and easy to work with. I like to use the Wow lip liner with Wow lipstick, I think they go really well, or well, they would go well because they're both kind of the same colour. And Strip Down is kind of a lighter brown colour that I like to apply all over my lips. The next few lip liners are all from Essence and Essence have like knocked it out of the park for me in the last year. The lip liners are just so creamy and they last all day and I couldn't ask for any better lip liners. My favourite out of all of them has been this lip liner and this is in 05 Softberry. I have used this in quite a lot of my videos and tutorials because they're just so amazing. This one is actually running out and I have bought a backup, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But the next one is this colour and this one is 08 Red Blush. They've changed the packaging a little bit and they have changed the formula as well. I feel like they're not as creamy as the old soft berry one used to be because the new one isn't as creamy and it's just a lot more rough I guess. But it's still amazing for the price. These are only £1 each and I definitely recommend them if you want to build your lip pencil collection. The next two lip liners are from the drugstore and they're from Rimmel. This one's in Cappuccino and this one is in Spice. I've particularly been loving this lip liner. It's kind of a dark cool brown colour and it just complements most lipsticks. I have it on today and I just really love it. It's so creamy again, pigmented and really affordable so it's there's not much more you can really ask for. There's only been one brand of eyelashes that I've really been enjoying in 2015 and they're from Coco. And my absolute favourites are the ones I'm wearing now and it's the Coco Lashes in Goddess. And they look like this, they're very dramatic but I feel like I need that because my eyelashes are naturally very full and long and I need something that's going to kind of make them even better than what they are and what I find with a lot of natural eyelashes are they're too short and they just don't complement my eyelashes so these ones have been absolutely amazing I've also been loving these ones um, these are Soho they're kind of similar a little bit longer more fluffy and also these Queen Bee lashes you can see these ones are much loved and I definitely need to buy a new pair a new discovery for me late last year was this Kiko glowing potion perfecting serum it looks like this and it kind of comes in a whitish colour and it kind of looks pearlescent almost and it just creates such a nice glow to the skin. It does eventually go clear and it's just so glowy. What I like about this is it works on my oily skin. It doesn't make me look overly dewy or oily. It's just a nice kind of base before foundation. You can even use this as a primer on its own or just something just after moisturiser. The only thing about this is it does have a scent to it. It's kind of strong, but it does go away after a while. I also adore the rose gold packaging. But my next favourite is the Chanel Chance Air Tendra perfume. And there's no comparison. This has been my favourite perfume in the last year, and it's definitely my Holy Grail signature perfume scent. It's very florally, and I just really adore the scent. It's just perfect. There's been a few moisturisers that I've been liking in the last year, and this one's the Kills Ultra Facial Moisturiser with SPF. 30. With this one I find that it's easy to apply, it doesn't create a white cast that some SPF moisturisers can do. It's also very lightweight and it doesn't block or clog your pores which is another reason why I like this. My favourite drugstore moisturiser is this Clean and Clear Dual Action Moisturiser. This one's very cheap and it just does a nice job at creating a base before primer and foundation again. For night time I've really been enjoying this Kills Midnight Recovery Concentrate and it's just a facial oil and it doesn't make me oily, it just does a nice job at making my skin very soft in the morning. It also kind of reduces my blemishes over time I feel like. This is probably my holy grail moisturiser for nighttime because it's just so amazing. It makes my skin so soft, again it kind of reduces blemishes and makes your skin very clear. And this is a Dermalogica Breakout Clearing Overnight Treatment. And I've actually bought a backup of this because it's that good and I've really been enjoying this. For face mask, I've been loving this Derma E Purifying 2-in-1 Charcoal Mask and I heard charcoal is really good for your skin and it kind of works as a scrub as well so I like to apply this and then rinse it off in the shower. There's only been one kind of exfoliating product that I've been in love with in the last year and that is a Derma E Microdermabrasion Scrub with Dead Sea Salt 
this one instantly you can you can see a difference when you apply it it just makes your skin again very soft and it just gets rid of all the dead skin cells it's just amazing it also gets rid of blackheads and things like that as well for removing my makeup I've really been liking the body shop chamomile Sil silky cleansing oil and I like this applique because it's just like a what's it called dispenser and it's just really easy to get the product out and it's also very hygienic and yeah I've just really been liking to take my makeup off it also takes off my eye makeup without irritating the eyes so this is really good for sensitive skin as well a few random favorites I've really been liking a few TV shows that I thought I'd give a little mention to the first one is the originals I've been loving the originals since it started but I feel like this year or last year rather it's just gotten that much better I do prefer it over the vampire diaries as well and I just really like the storylines and everything that's going on at the moment. Another favourite has been Scandal. Scandal is absolutely amazing. Definitely a fan favourite of mine. And again, I really like the storylines in that. And I've also been loving Pretty Little Lies. It's recently started again in the UK. You can watch it on Netflix. And it's just so suspenseful and I just really enjoy those type of shows. Okay guys, I think I pretty much covered everything and I think that pretty much wraps up my beauty favourites of 2015. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Again, don't forget to let me know what your favourites of the last year has been, if we have any similar favourites and all that. Follow me on all of my social media, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat and I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. Again, sorry for leaving it for so long but I hope it was worth the wait. Bye!